This video, I'm going to show you the three reasons high vibrational people feel lonely and why many times they will literally block either their soul connections, soul family, people from coming into their lives. And I'm going to show you how to switch that around so that you meet who you're supposed to meet and also you stop feeling lonely. The first reason is that many times when people go through a spiritual awakening or they begin to raise or elevate their vibration, they go through a process where they literally reorder their values and they value other things over what they used to value. So for example, when I went through my awakening back in 2012, I went through a process where I went from before I was smoking a lot of cannabis, I was taking ADHD medication, I was partying a lot. Um, I just, I valued things like that. And then I learned meditation and my whole entire life changed. I started uh, becoming aware of different negative beliefs that I had. I started to, uh, within two or three weeks, I quit taking Adderall, I quit smoking cannabis. And just so much of my life changed where I started feeling completely different. And then I was into very different things. Then I was into things like mantras. I remember I was living at this house with my, um, my mom and some like my, my brothers and sisters and stuff. And I was in this house kind of in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and I would do not weird things, but maybe a little bit. Um, and I would meditate. I would uh, like be meditating, do sun gazing. I did all these like spiritual things. And from the outside looking in, I can see why some people, especially old friends, may have looked at me and been like, dude, what the hell happened to Aaron? You know, and it was literally my values changed. I started focusing on meditation. I was listening to binarial beats. I was watching YouTube videos and listening to content that I thought would elevate my consciousness more. And I developed this mentality where that was my main focus. And then it was harder for me to relate to people where what we used to do is we used to they'd come over, we'd smoke some weed, we'd play some basketball till like one or two in the morning. We'd uh, have these cool talks. I mean, it was honestly a very nostalgic time, but I can see how my values changed. And then after that, I just didn't relate to people in the same way. So one of the things you want to become aware of with this though is what you can do is you, your values will change, your priorities will change, and realize that it's nothing personal. You don't have to think, you don't have to like judge yourself, but also don't judge other people. I think when I went through my awakening, one thing that happened is I ended up judging people that didn't understand me, and that left me feeling very alone. And that left me also, and it was a, a two-way screen because I remember at the time as well, my dad thought I went crazy because at the same time I went at that time I went vegan. So I stopped eating. Uh, I really, I wasn't, I just, I stopped eating a lot of food, um, went vegan and lost a lot of weight and I started looking unhealthy. So friends and other family members like my dad and stuff, they literally thought I was on drugs. And the funny thing was I was off of Adderall, not smoking cannabis, but yet I'm getting all this flack from people because my dad's over here telling me eat a sandwich. Uh, and one thinking, you know, I know he's thinking in the back of the head that I fried myself with some drug when really I was just so excited about the spiritual awakening stuff that I wanted everyone to understand. But I remember in that time, it was definitely one of the most lonely periods of my time. I would met it I, I, at the time as well. I mean, I, I became very ungrounded. I quit my job on a whim. I worked at Nordstrom's and women's shoes and I would just meditate for months and months and months. And I would sun gaze, meditate, do mantras. And it was a very introspective time of my life. But at the same time, I developed a belief that people just don't get me. People don't get me. They're judging me. And the way I would rationalize that is I would say to myself and think to myself, they're just asleep. They don't understand. And it became this spiritual significance thing that it's the, I think it's a very dangerous trap to get into. But one of the things that I think will change it a lot for you if you're going through this process of feeling lonely is to let go of the judgments that you might have towards them and understand they're just doing the best they can with where they are and they may not understand you, but it's okay. And the more that I would accept them, ironically, the more they would accept me. It's an interesting thing because the way it works is like our reality is a reflection of our inner reality. So it's like people almost can feel, that was the other thing too, is I was almost trying to sell it to people in the sense I'm like, don't you understand if you meditate, you'll change your life, we're eternal spiritual beings of a temporary human experiences and it would just repel them where they didn't want to listen to more of it. But slowly but surely what happened is I stopped hanging out with certain people just because my, um, 
it just there wasn't as much in common, and it's nothing bad. Like I still I still have all my my friends from high school and stuff. I love them to death. I think they're amazing. Um, but there was a definitely I felt lonely in that time, and I felt like people didn't understand me. And what I had to what that allowed me to do is to go with in myself more, and to give myself my own level of validation, but also like it was a it was awareness that I don't need necessarily other people in the same way, which is a very empowering thing, but also kind of a lonely thing as well. Now, let's also, also first off, look at the difference between being lonely and being alone, because it makes a huge difference. Lonely is when you miss other people. Being alone is when you can still be happy with yourself. And lonely normally is like a focus on other. It's focused on other people are here, and then we internalize it and think it's something wrong with us. Alone, though, is very different. If I would have reinterpreted that and saw myself as just being more alone that time, it maybe would have been a lot easier. But I had friends think I went crazy. My dad thought I went crazy, thought I was on drugs. I wasn't on anything. Um, And it was just a time where I just kind of accepted. I had to accept that this is like the phase of my life right now where people just don't get me. And then I got a job again at Barney's New York this time, worked there for years. And then um, like I integrated back into 3D, I guess you could say. And... Then shortly afterwards in 2017, I ended up like going to, you know, going daily on YouTube and that's when my life really changed. But the first one is about that. It's about not judging at the same time, but realizing your standards are changing and that's okay. Now, the second thing you want to do and you want to become aware of if you're a high vibrational person feeling lonely is that you may have a belief there that says, a core belief that says people don't get me. There's not many people out there like me. And first off, I guarantee you, there are so many people that would resonate with you, but that belief is literally keeping other people, your high vibe family, soulmates, whatever, from coming into your life. Because what happens is we literally only see the self-fulfilling prophecy. And for a long time, what happened is I felt lonely, felt stuck, and I had this belief that people just didn't get me. I had to eventually drop that belief. And when I did, these people started popping into my life. That's when I met Victor, other high vibe family. But we have to let that go. And I'll I'll tell you right now, if you look down in the comment section below, you will see many people that are that of, you know, that would resonate with you because you're into a video like this, you know, into this channel in general. So they're out there. It's just that They're literally made invisible the more we tell ourselves that these people aren't out there. And the more we tell ourselves there's not people like me. There are people like you. You're unique, but at the same time, there are people that have similar values as you. And the way that you find them is by being yourself. It is by being in alignment with who you came here to be. It's by following your passion and understanding that our beliefs create our reality. So... That was something that I had to do is I had to stop telling myself that people don't get me. People don't understand me. um, People are all asleep. And the more you, and here's the thing too. This also works in like love, dating, relationships, all that. I realized a long time ago that I had blocks when it came to dating because I literally was subconsciously judging and like, it was like, it was also like, I think an intimacy block for me not to open up my heart in a way, but it was a way that I would go about, like I realized that I would feel judged or have these blocks, but part of it was just like, I had, I set such a high standard for myself and I just almost assumed certain things. And it was like this internal judgment that was being projected out that then other people pick up on. So one thing I had to do is I had to, I had to start also realizing I can connect with people that don't have the same values as me. I used to work at, you know, selling women's shoes and in Vegas, and I would help people from all over the world, people from Japan, Mexico, Europe, Australia, everywhere. And the one thing I learned is I learned how to connect with different types of people with different values and um, realize that if you're like, well, I can only connect with people at a very deep level in this way, you'll realize that if that's the standard you set, then you're setting yourself a very high standard, but realize you can connect with people in different ways. It doesn't have to be they understand the, the Pleiadian starseed system or <laughs> they don't have to know about all these uh, different things that you might see on this YouTube channel. 
you can relate to people because we're all human, you know, and it's, I think sometimes we have this, this pattern as well, like we're spiritual beings having temporary human experiences, but we're also all human as well. We're here to have a human experience. And the more we can enjoy this experience, the more that like abundance comes, the more that we'll find that that ends up bringing like more people into our life, more loving connections into our life. And that's something that changes everything. Now, the third thing, and probably one of the most significant things is that of understanding the family dynamics that you had growing up and, or even just when you went through your awakening, how do you define yourself and your identity? Are you the lone wolf of your family? Are you the one that like the people just don't get, it always felt a little bit different, but how did you also connect based on your family dynamics? Because sometimes if we felt like people didn't get us, we felt like we didn't have our needs met or we felt like we had emotional unavailability there, we may find ourselves literally blocking out and just trying to keep ourselves safe from intimacy, from deep connections. So you want to become aware of what that is. And not only that though, another aspect of this, I think is just so, uh, oh, I, did, I haven't stated enough in this video is make sure you are following your passion. You are being the most authentic you, you can be. Because I honestly didn't meet a lot of the people in my life that resonate with me at this level until I started following my passion. Doesn't mean I had to have like 100,000 YouTube subscribers. On the contrary, when I started making videos, I just started noticing synchronicities. I started meeting people and it comes from being in that authentic frequency of, of your passion. Embodying your passion is the key because it also activates your heart center and then you're able to connect with other people in a heart centered way. So realize that high vibrational people are out there. The key to connecting to them is activating your own heart, following your own passion, redefining yourself as not being lonely, but more so being comfortable with yourself, being alone, but also let go of the belief that says that people don't get you because they can get you. And you're, they're literally being made invisible right now because of that. Now, something else we're doing, if you haven't heard about it, is the Shift Experience live event. It's happening in Austin, Texas, May 6th, 7th, and 8th. If you want to meet your high vibe tribe, if you want to shift into your purpose, shift into your passion, shift into your most authentic self, this event is for you. There is either a in-person option or a virtual option. There are only 80 seats available in person. If you want to check that out, click the link below or go to theshiftexperience.com. Now you can join at either in-person or, or virtual. As long as there's in-person tickets, they probably will go fast. Um, other than that though, I'm excited to for us all to connect in this way. I think it's very powerful. Now is the time. If you want as well, comment below and let me know where are you from? You'll probably see other people that are from your city, from where you're from, and that will make a huge difference. So with that being said as well, if you haven't, if you want to check out a video that will help you release these blocks and to let go of the abandonment that you may feel, which will help you feel more magnetic, watch this video here. It's one of the most powerful videos I've made. This video, I just wanted to show you what really helped me to heal my own abandonment wound because I think that like when you do it, it changes your whole life. When you heal your abandonment wound, it will change your whole entire life.